Hello, this is Dr. Benjamin Norris from the Chemistry Department at Frostburg State University. In this video, I'm going to go over the nomenclature of thiols. In the previous video in this series, uh, I shared the generic structure of thiols. Uh, these are compounds that contain a sulfur bonded to a hydrogen, and then that's bonded to a hydrocarbon group. And it turns out that for most simple thiols, the name of the thiol is made by uh, smushing together the alkane name or the hydrocarbon name plus thiol. Uh, and, and as we get more complicated, we're obviously going to get to the point where we need to use uh, locants and other things to help us sort out the structure. But let's start off something pretty similar, or pretty simple, I'm sorry. So here's a simple thiol. Right. This is uh, a molecule that has two carbon atoms and uh, thiol. So the hydrocarbon that this is built from is ethane, two carbons, and we just add the thiol. So, uh, Thiols are generally named by adding the thiol suffix name uh, to the uh, alkane name. You know, if you're thinking about it in terms of more general uh, IUPAC nomenclature, then the suffix for thiol is actually like this, the thiol suffix. And I'm putting the E in here, right, because the suffix for other things drops the E off of the hydrocarbon name. So you know, ethanol isn't ethanol, it's ethanol. So, so we keep make sure that we keep this E in. It's not ethanthiol, it's ethanethiol. And then it doesn't take long before we get to a point where we need to use uh, locants to identify the different uh, positions that that thiol can possibly be. Right, so here is... a uh, thiol that's attached to a three carbon chain and I've already drawn its uh, constitutional isomer over there. Right. And this thiol is attached to carbon one on this structure and it's attached to carbon two on this structure. So we need to make sure that the name encompasses that connectivity. Uh, this is a three carbon chain. So this is a propane thiol. Uh, and this first one is one propane thiol. Though like other nomenclature examples, we can also type propane one thiol. And when this Second example is propane 2 thiol or 2 propane thiol. Uh, and let's take a minute um, and just uh, let's take a minute and then we'll put up another structure here and name it. Keeping it simple. All right. <clears throat> if you want to pause the video for a couple of seconds and work out the name of this structure, go right ahead. Because in uh, three, two, one, I'm going to go over the name of this structure. So if we were starting with this compound and it did not have the thiol on it, we would name this cyclohexane. So we start with cyclohexane and then we just add thiol to that name. So this is cyclohexane thiol. Very briefly, I want to go over uh, some like common names for thiols. So one common name strategy is to have like, start with like alkyl thiol. So this, this mirrors some of the common names for alcohols like ethyl alcohol, tert butyl alcohol, and so on. So our three uh, thiols 
using this n naming system to cover the propyl, cover this naming system, propyl thiol. This one is actually an isopropyl group. So this is alkyl group, thiol, and then the last one is cyclohexyl thiol. Uh, an older name for thiols is this word mercaptan. And I need to talk about mercaptan because uh, mercaptan serves as the basis of one way of naming thiols uh, as substituents. So uh, let's use this mercaptan method. Uh, it's the same thing as saying like propyl thiol, but we're going to say propyl mercaptan. Or not isopropyl thiol, but isopropyl mercaptan. Not a lot of people use this mercaptan uh, naming method anymore, but it does serve as the base for uh, the sulfur functional group or the thiol functional group as a substituent. So let's do that. All right. The thiol uh, functional group as a substituent tends to have lower priority than other kinds of functional groups common in the structure of organic compounds. So here in this molecule that has both an alcohol and a thiol, right, that the thiol is a lower priority functional group. The alcohol is going to control the suffix and the, the locants in terms of how we're going to number this compound. So the alcohol is going to be a carbon one, the thiol is going to be a carbon three, and this is going to be some kind of substituted propanol, one propanol, all right? Because we have the alcohol at carbon one. This thiol is the mercapto substituent. So here's where that mercapto comes in, right? This is three mercapto propan one all or perfectly fine to say three mercapto one propanol. Now there are uh, there is a also uh, a, a use of sulfanol as a substituent. Uh, I do not see this as commonly as mercapto but uh, some folks would rather use sulfanol as a substituent, try to forget about this whole mercapto nonsense. Um, so this would be three sulfanol, prop one prop propan one all, or three sulfanol one propanol. So let's do a couple of examples really quickly. Um, let's draw two mercapto. Uh, yeah, let's draw. Yeah, let's draw two mercapto. Actually, I would draw three mercapto. Sorry about this. Mercapto two octanol. Uh, this model. So again, if you want to pause the video here for a moment and work on this, go right ahead. And in three, two, one, I'm going to, to start off the answer. So this is some kind of octanol. So we first start with our octane chain, eight carbon atoms, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And there is an alcohol functional group on carbon two. Uh, and that's a chirality center, but I didn't provide the, the stereochemistry, so we'll just leave it there. And then in three mercapto, the mercapto functional group is the thiol functional group. And so I fill that in in uh, carbon three. So here's three mercapto to octanol. Now uh, let's do another practice and let's name 
this structure. So let's provide a name. Uh, this one does have some chirality in it. So we'll have to remember to include chirality, whoops, in the, uh, the chirality descriptors in the name for this compound. So again, you can pause the video and work on this one. Uh, and then I will resume in three, two, one. So the, the functional groups present here are a thiol, some alkyl groups, and an ether. Uh, the, the ether is almost always a substituent, so it's not going to affect the, subs, uh, the, the suffix. And we're going to start numbering this compound at the thiol, and we're going to work our way around towards the ether functional group. And I'm going to put carbon 2 where the two methyl groups are. One, two, this is carbon three, carbon four is, is at the, the methoxy group. And so this is cyclohexane thiol as the parent chain with the thiol suffix. And then I have a methoxy substituent, which is alphabetically before the 2,2-dimethyl. And it's running off the screen because it's long, so let me get this back over here. So without stereochemistry, this is 4-methoxy-2,2-dimethyl cyclohexane thiol. And in terms of stereochemistry, this first, the, the thiol chirality center is going to have S stereochemistry and the uh, methoxy chirality center is going to have R stereochemistry. This one's a little bit trickier. So if you're having, if you can't quite see that, um, take a moment and um, check out that. So this is one S and four R. And let's make sure that's capital R. We italicize our stereochemical descriptors. 1S4R4-methoxy-2,2-dimethylcyclohexane thiol. Next video, I'm going to talk about sulfide nomenclature. So stay tuned.